Hello, third video in our series. This should be the last one on the mean valued theorem. This is an example. In the first video, we looked at Rolle's theorem, an example of that being used. In the second video, we introduced the mean value theorem and we proved it. And now we are going to look at an example of a standard mean value theorem question. My name is Nakai Rimmer. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoy it. So we have this function f of x equals 1 over 1 plus x, and we're interested on the interval of 0 to 1. Our job is to uh, check and make sure that it satisfies the conditions of the mean value theorem and then uh, apply it and, and actually find the value that is guaranteed by the mean value theorem. And so our function is 1 over 1 plus x. The only issue we really have to worry about is that negative 1. But x equals negative 1 is not in our interval. And so our function is continuous on the closed interval 0 to 1. Okay. We take its derivative, bring down the negative 1, take it to the negative 2, multiply by its derivative, which is 1. So that's better than doing the quotient rule on it. Whenever you have a constant over a function, bring that function up with a negative exponent. So your derivative is negative 1 on top of 1 plus x quantity squared. Still, the only issue is that negative 1, and we don't have that. So your function is differentiable on the closed interval. But we'll just say the open interval from 0 to 1. That's all we need for the mean value there. Who guarantees that there'll be some place inside the interval 0 to 1 where the slope of the line that connects the two points at 0 and 1 will, will be um, equal to the tangent line slope. All right, let's see what that slope is. When you plug a 1 in, what do you get to your function? What is f of 1? And when you plug a 0 in, what do you get with your function? What is f of 0? And so f of 1 will be 1 over 1 plus 1, so 1 over 2. And f of 0 is going to be 1. Subtract these in the order of f of 1 minus f of 0. We'll have a half minus 1. We'll have a negative 1 half. And then conveniently, the denominator is 1 minus 0, so that'll be a 1. The value is negative 1 half. Some place will be guaranteed that the derivative will be equal to negative 1 half. We have the derivative right here, negative 1 over the quantity of 1 plus x squared. So we're going to take that derivative. We're going to set it equal to negative 1 half. Mean value theorem guarantees that there's such a value. Fine, it is going to be some drama, but let's try it. What value makes this true? Where well, I set this equal to negative 1 half. Well, it works out nice because we have negative 1 in the numerator, both of them. If you can think about it, we can cross multiply, but basically if the numerators are equal, then the denominators have to be equal. Now don't square it out. A perfect square is great for you because then you can take a square root of both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. The action of solving an equation by taking the square root causes you to bring in the plus or minus on the other side. And then you just take away the one. One of these is in our interval and one of these isn't. If you're at negative 1 and you take away root 2, there's no way you're going to be inside the interval 0 to 1. And so that one's not the one we're talking about. But if you're at negative 1 and you add root 2, root 2 is about 1.4. It'll put you right in our interval from 0 to 1. That's our answer. We did it. Wasn't that bad? Okay. Tangent line slope equals secant line slope. All right. Great. Oh, this happened to be a multiple, multiple choice question, so there's the answer there. This is from a, um, a quiz or a final, uh, maybe like, more like a final exam from one some semester. Okay, um, let's see another use of the mean value theorem. Uh, I have this strange function that I don't know much information about. I don't know what the function is. I just know that when I plug a 1 in, I get a 10. And I, for some reason, I know that the derivative is always bigger than or equal to 2. And I'm interested in the x's from 1 to 4. And the question that I'm interested in answering is, what's the smallest that the function at 4 could be? We're going to use the mean value theorem to answer this question. So how can I say that the function is continuous on this interval? Because we're told that the derivative is more than or equal to 2 on this interval. If your derivative exists, then you're continuous. 
And so not only are you continuous, but you're also differentiable. The fact that your derivative was more than or equal to 2 was enough to say that. So the slope of your tangent line is more than or equal to 2. Okay. And we're going to employ the mean value theorem to say that somewhere, f prime of c, your tangent line slope will be equal to this formula from the secant line slope, f of 4 minus f of 1 over 4 minus 1. We don't know what f of 4 is. We do know what f of 1 is. We know that f of 1 is 10. Let's go ahead and plug that in. Uh, let's take the, um, the multiplied version where we um, have that denominator, 4 minus 1, multiplied over. Okay, so that's a 3. All right. 3 times my derivative at c plus f of 1 is what f of 4 is. You can solve it for that. There's also, there's also a very visual way we can do this. I'm doing an algebraic way, but let's take a look at this now. So I want to know how small f of 4 can possibly be. I know that my derivative is always bigger than or equal to 2. So if I want to know how small f of 4 can be, then I know that I can switch that equals to to a greater than or equal to and put in the smallest possible value of f prime of x on that interval. Maybe it happens more than one time, but I'm sure it does happen at least once that my derivative is equal to 2 someplace. And that would be the that would then lead to the smallest possible value for f of four. Take the three, who's the four minus one, multiply that by the two, that's six. Six plus ten, f of four has to be greater than or equal to sixteen. Okay. In order for you to have a derivative who's more than or equal to two, uh, when it's when it's equal to two your tangent line slope will be equal to your secant line slope. Okay. All right, great. Strange question, but we're able to get information. The mean value theorem is incredibly useful. We don't really see it. It works behind the scenes in a lot of things that we do. In the next slide, let's take a look at a couple of things that we say for sure in calculus class, but we don't prove. Uh, the actual proof of them, though, would be the mean value theorem. If your derivative is zero for all x, on some open interval a to b then your function is constant on that entire interval we say it we, we wave our hands and say of course it's true but no to actually prove it you would use the mean value theorem and then if you have two functions that that have derivatives that are equal to each other the functions aren't necessarily equal to each other but we can say by using the mean value theorem behind the scenes, we can be sure that the functions differ by a constant. The f of x is equal to the g of x plus some constant. Now, we're not going to prove them. I just want you to know these profound statements that we take for granted. Of course, that thing is constant. Of course, you know, they differ by a constant. Well, to prove such things, we need the mean value theorem. All right, this video is getting a little bit too long. This series has gotten too long. Thank you for watching. My name is Nakai Rimmer. We made it through the mean value theorem, used Rose theorem, proved the mean value theorem, stated it, and we used some examples and found out how it's working behind the scenes. Please like and subscribe, comment down below. Let me know what other kind of videos you want to see, and I'll see you in the next video.